OK. Uh, hello, everyone. So first of all, uh, thank you for spending your afternoon with us. Um, you know, as part of today's uh, session, we're going to cover performance analytics uh, you know, for Citrix apps and desktops. Uh, my name is Samir Mehta. I'm part of the product management team here at Citrix. I'm also joined by Jitendra Deshpande, who is a VP of engineering for cloud and server, as well as uh, you know, performance analytics as well. And in the auditorium, I see a lot of familiar faces, you know, customers that I've interacted in the past, or also a lot of my colleagues that have been part of this journey as well. So thank you for everybody being here. Uh, as, part of, uh, as part of today's agenda, what we'll do is uh, we'll go over overall strategy as it relates to Citrix Analytics. Um, I want to spend some time giving you, uh, just giving you a little bit of information as to what we released as part of uh, Citrix Analytics for security as well, so what's new. And then we'll do a deep dive as it relates to performance analytics and what value that we intend to provide to our current customers um, you know, as, as we move along with this journey. Okay. So uh, as it relates to our strategy for Citrix Analytics, uh, these are the three core principles uh, on which a strategy resides on. Right? So uh, you know, any good organization in order to be successful, they need to start uh, measuring and providing insights, right? And to provide insights, you need data. Once you're able to measure something, you can, uh, you can drive a lot of meaningful answers as to uh, you know, whether it's on the security side, on the performance side, or you know, business metrics, or things and, uh, things and so on, right? Uh, so you can measure it. Once you can measure it, you can monitor it. Once you can monitor it, you can start managing it as, as we move forward. Right? So the core fundamental of measuring right, begins with not just, showing, uh, not just showing dashboards and metrics and data to our customers, but actually providing them some predictable insights. In order to do that, right, we're using machine learning algorithms so that you as a customer, you as a partner, you know, don't have the onus of looking into many different consoles to really realize as to uh, where and what the problems are. Right? So that's one core principle that is truly differentiated, right? uh, uh, and that's the reason we call it like the world's first uh, perf you know, solution as it relates to being able to quantify you know, user experience and uh, things and so on. So that's based on uh, AI, AI and ML. Actually, within Citrix, we have a dedicated team you know, just of data scientists altogether that their entire job is to uh, refine models uh, as it relates to all the events that are coming on, you know, from Citrix products, which goes into our second principle, you know, uh, based on our strategy, is that it's not just limited to one given product. So, for example, as it relates to security analytics, we're getting events from many different products within the Citrix portfolio, so that we can provide you a point of view, you know, uh, such that we're able to profile the user behavior just uh, you know, as they interact with Citrix products. Right? So that's the, the second core principle. And third is, while the service resides on cloud, and one of the, one of the biggest reasons uh, it resides on cloud is because we're using a completely modern engineering stack right? uh, which, uh, which allow us to provide these predictive analysis. Right? So while the service in itself, which is Citrix Analytics, resides on cloud, we're, we're completely cognizant that a lot of our customers are either on-prem customers, or some of them might have taken the cloud journey and might be hybrid customers as well, or some of them um, you know, might be all cloud as well. So this is not all or nothing. So if you're an on-prem customer, there is a lot of value which I'm about to share with you that you can take advantage of you know, as you move forward. Right? <clears throat> so, uh, so going back to you know, uh, what are the fundamental problems that we're looking to address you know, with this particular service as it relates to Citrix Analytics? Um, you know, the first, last year, uh, we released security analytics at Synergy uh, Keynote. And uh, we shared user risk scores, you know, just as how we get uh, events from different Citrix products altogether. This year, at Synergy Keynote, we shared 
uh, experience scores or user experience scores uh, that you will be able to get through performance analytics as well, right? So those are the kind of problems, uh, those are kind of pain points that we're looking to address, you know, uh, uh, for our customers. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's not just uh, specific to one given solution, it spans across all Citrix products. And we're not just looking at a given data source, right? Our goal is really to provide a point of view just as how users see it, right? So for example, if users are using our content collaboration solution or endpoint management solution or apps and desktop solution uh, or workspace solution, right? We want to make sure that we're able to capture the experience, right? Uh, as it relates to users, you know, what's going on in the, uh, on the network, right? So we have a product known as Citrix Gateway as well, right? So can we actually capture some events from the network itself as well as from application such that it's comprehensive view and it does not provide a view as to where you sit in your deployment altogether, right? Which is the biggest, uh, you know, advantage uh, for Citrix Analytics. Okay. Now, um, you know, why? Why, why Citrix Analytics and how are we poised to win, right, as we, as we move forward? So first of all, it is, a, a, you know, our, we're, we're working really hard and we're being extremely diligent such that it is a turnkey solution. And what I mean by that is once you actually configure your products to actually send data to our Citrix Analytics platform, and we make it very easy for customers to, in order to do that, and we'll actually do a demo as to how easy it is, right? We're able to profile end user behavior, right? So that's, that's, that's one of the things uh, that we believe the, that is a core differentiator. Outside of that, you know, what I mentioned earlier, that we have a dedicated team of data scientists that are continuously looking on refining models as it relates to security analytics and now performance analytics as well, right? So as we move forward, whether it's risk score or user experience score, we want to give you an accurate answer just as how the user would see it, okay? So that's, that's another advantage. And then third is that we're not just looking to just provide you visibility and pretty dashboards, right? Uh, because the last thing we want to be able to do is just give you yet another tool to go manage all your monitoring, you know, as well as uh, insights related. On the contrary, right, once we have these insights and trends, we want to make certain recommendations that either you can, as a customer, can go execute manually, or, right, if you configure actions on our side, we can actually, uh, you know, uh, initiate an action uh, on the Citrix Analytics platform. So, for example, you know, let, let me give you a use case. Uh, so, for a lot of customers, right, uh, session recording, which has been within part of apps and desktop, has been a very important feature, right? Now, what we did was, within Citrix Analytics platform, we looked at all the events coming in. If the risk score for that particular user is above a given, uh, of, above a given threshold, we can actually initiate session recording automatically. So that's a great example that we're providing value and seeing the funnel end to end altogether, and not just saying that administrators need to turn on session recording for every single customer. So it's a, it's turnkey. It's you know it's it's a closed loop action that the platform actually provides. Okay. So uh, you know I'll spend just a you know quick a minute or two on security analytics, the, um, and then uh, we'll do a deep dive uh, on what the session is about, which is on the performance side. So on the security analytics side, uh, you know, there are three key announcements that we made um, at, uh, at keynote stage, right? So one was that a lot of Citrix customers are also Microsoft customers as well. And, you know, Microsoft exposes a security graph API. And through that graph API, we are able to consume a lot of these security events such that as we calculate the risk score, we're just not looking at you know, the products that, have, uh, that, that customers have installed within Citrix, but we're also looking to partner, right, uh, uh, you know, with companies such as Microsoft, such that we can take into that data into account as well. So that's one. Second is, a lot of customers asked us is that this, you know, it's great. I mean, you know, I see a lot of value in the platform, but I've already invested in Splunk, you know, and I want to be able to aggregate a lot of data 
uh, because there are many people and for many different reasons. Right? They might have a workflow that's initiated through Splunk altogether. So you can go within the platform, Citrix Analytics platform, and you can configure Splunk as a data source, and all the risk indicators will actually can be actually uh, can be exported as a feed into Splunk, just like any other data uh, source that comes about. Okay. And lastly, that uh, we're also, you know, we're working with ping identity such that as and when a risk score goes beyond a given threshold, we're able to take an action, you know, uh, you know, through ping, uh, ping identity, which is an which is an IDP provider altogether. Okay. So that's on the security analytics side. So let's let's pivot and talk about performance. Um, so on on performance analytics, um, uh, what what we noticed talking to multitude of our customers is that uh, as they go about journey, uh, as they go about in, in, in their customer journey on adopting Citrix Workspace, Citrix Workspace has many different components. You know, VDI or apps and desktops is, is one component. There is mobile applications, there is web and SaaS applications, and so obviously content that is associated with a lot of these, you know, a lot of these apps. And customers have to do our customers have to deploy a variety of different tools, right? Whether some of, some of which from Citrix and some of them are not from Citrix altogether. So uh, what we thought is that, you know what, uh, there is a, obviously a lot of tools, a lot of consoles. Can, can we actually provide them one view to tell them as to what is really going on, you know, in their environment? Right? So, that, uh, so that they're not strapped to looking at, okay, if it's a network problem, I need to go into one console. If it's an infrastructure problem, I need to go into some other console. If I need to run a set of checks, you know, which is part of Citrix Cloud, uh, I need to go to a different console altogether. Right? The other thing is that um, it's not like we don't have data. On the contrary, customers have told us that we have a lot of data within our repository. Right? So uh, within apps and desktops, a lot of that data sits in the monitoring database. Um, if you have gateway deployed, a lot of that data actually flows, a lot of that network data flows through the gateway itself, through HDX Insights. And, um, you know, if you're, uh, if, uh, you know, as, as and when you're using Workspace app as well, you know, we, we, we could capture data from there as well. So our goal is to be able to take all of this particular data and to actually solve some meaningful problems and some pain points that customers are currently facing and continue to face, right? So this is not just yet another tool with a lot more data, but we truly want to be able to provide certain deterministic answers, right? So that is, those are some of the problems that customers were you know, running into. You know, as, they, uh, as they start off with their, uh, perhaps with their apps and desktops journey, but eventually as they move along, they might get into other components of Citrix products as well, okay? Now, and to address to that, uh, we launched this uh, brand new service, uh, which is Citrix Analytics for Performance. And what we're doing over here is that we're capturing uh, user experience uh, and quantifying user experience through UX scores, which is user experience scores, right? Because one of the things that we noticed was a lot of customers, um, when their IT department gets asked as to what is your experience? Can you quantify experience with Citrix stack, with Citrix services, with Citrix technology? It's always a qualitative assessment, right? So it's always an assessment, okay, I got a support call, you know, and I would argue that if, as and when you get a support call, you know, most of the time your, you know, your end users are already not so happy, you know, with the stack because they're actually running into a problem. Right, so it's hard to quantify user experience just as our users see it, okay? And that's one of the main uh, biggest pain points that customers run into. So we were like, okay, let's get all this data, let's run a bunch of uh, machine learning models, let's, uh, let's start classifying as to, you know what, who's having a good experience, who's not having such a good experience, um, you know, and who's having a terrible experience, and let's take that as an entry point to further diagnose as to what problems are they running into. Perhaps there is a problem within Citrix. Uh, uh, perhaps it's a problem outside of Citrix. And if it's a, it's a problem outside of Citrix, we want, to, we want to enable our customers to say that it's not Citrix, it's something else, and what is that something else altogether, okay? So that, is, that, was, that was obviously one of the big uh, key use case. Outside of that, uh, being able to isolate users with poor performance, providing end-to-end -end visibility, you know. The other thing, that we noticed for, especially for on-prem customers. By the way, just a show of hands, how many of you are on on-prem? Just a show of hands over here. Okay, fantastic. 
So you will appreciate, right? Uh, actually, another question. How many of you are on-prem and have more than one site? Okay, a lot of you raised your hands, right? Now, what would happen is that you, you can log into director and you can look into your session information and your you know, user information and things of that nature, but for every given site, you have to log into a different director instance altogether. Now, either you use APIs or you build your own portal or, or what have you, all of a sudden you have to aggregate all this information in, in, in some other you know, portal altogether. So that was obviously a huge, you know, and some of our customers have 10, 15 sites across the world. So being able to aggregate all of that information and giving them into one simple view is, you know, it's just simple math, but we just, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't really get to doing that because at currently director sits as to where the site sits, so we were not able to aggregate all of that information. So that's clearly another pain point that you will see that I'll get to in a minute uh, as to what information that we provide. Okay. So, so why now? And, and why are we poised to win you know, when it comes to performance analytics. You know, first is again going back to user experience scores. We're using machine learning, we are using models, we're using progressive technology, right? We're using a modern engineering stack, right? Our engineers are building machine learning models using Scala, our programming languages, which, which typically, right, are, are in more progressive you know, companies, they're using the same set of models to determine, you know, different, uh, different use cases altogether. So we're using the exact same stack, you know, which other companies are using uh, for, but obviously for a different use case. So that is, that is one. Outside of that, we're getting data not only from one source, which is director, but we're also getting data from Gateway through HDX Insights, right? We, you know, we will plan to get data from Workspace app as well. So imagine now you're getting data from all your infrastructure from your monitoring database, right? If you needed access to HDX Insights, you actually had to go to ADM to get network vi level visibility. But we're making it easier for customers, and you will see in a minute as to if you had to triage any latency level issues, right? You, it'll be much easier to do that with performance analytics. So we're bringing all of these together because you just cannot isolate launch performance and use a tool, right? What we noticed as you know, customers are using Director to diagnose you know, maybe log on issues and use some other tool for something else and then some other tool for something else for the same session. Because now you have to remember your session ID, you have to remember your connection ID, correlate it, you know, and it's just, it's just not easy, right, altogether. So we're bringing all of these things together. Secondly, the platform also provides us self-service capabilities. So we've got natural language processing, which Jitendra will actually show you in a bit, which means that you can actually build your own reports as, as we move forward, right, making it very easy you know, to outside of the pre-canned reports that we have, you can build your own as well. And lastly, right, it's going to take less than, like I want to say less than five minutes to go up and running on this particular solution, which we will also demo as well. Okay. So coming to user experience scores, um, so in this, in this, so this is the first view that customers will be exposed to, uh, you know, as and when they come under performance tab within Citrix Analytics. And what this says is that uh, in my organization, I've got about 650 users, and 50 users are not having a good experience as, as they interact with Citrix stack, right, uh, for apps and desktop. Now, I also know that overall, right, my system score, which is my user experience score is 80, which means that, you know what, majority of my users are actually happy with Citrix. And we just don't do that. We actually provide a trend over a period of time. So let's say tomorrow your boss or your CIO comes in, it's like, you know what, like I need to justify like our investment in Citrix and are people happy with Citrix technology and things of that nature. You can actually easily pull up a, a trend report of your user experience scores over the last one month and say that, you know, look at, look at the amount of people that are actually happy with Citrix, you know, technology altogether, right? So which is one of the things that our customers are asked to do is that, you know, send scheduled reports. So that's, that's one. Um, and then what we do is we just don't show you this data. We will take all of this data and using model, we will actually segment it into key categories, 
So the first category that you see is log on. The next one you see is network latency, which is ICA RTT, which is the ICA round trip time. Then you see session failures, reconnections, CPU, you know, what is the load on your VDA machines? And we will take and we have, uh, you know, we will wait as to what each of these factors and how much importance do they play given, uh, you know, uh, to your Citrix experience, you know, user, user experience. So for example, if I launch an application and it takes me more than a minute to launch an application, that user in the logon duration category will be flagged as red, right, automatically. If it takes, let's say, 10 seconds or five seconds, it's, it's a green, right? Any, anything in between, it's, it's, it's gonna be a yellow over there, right? So the goal is that, and all these charts are going to be clicked through. So you, you know, which is the next screen is, let's say I want to diagnose as to, okay, what's going on with these 50 users, right? So what I'll do is that, okay, I click on these 50 users. Again, I will show you a distribution as to how are these 50 users placed, okay? Are these 50 users having a poor logon? Or are these 50 users launching, right, apps and desktops from, let's say, a network that has, you know, a low bandwidth and high latency altogether, right? So if majority of your connections are coming in, let's say, from, like, you know, a, let's say you're using a Starbucks Wi-Fi altogether, there's not much that IT can do besides just letting them know that, you know what, you just need to be on a better network altogether. That's about it. And we will highlight that over here in ICA round trip time. We will actually segment it with not only round trip time, but we will say that so much is your van latency, so much is your infrastructure latency, L7 latency, and all of that metrics we get because we own the protocol that actually goes on the wire altogether, right? And all of that insights is available through HDX today, which we're getting all of that data, right? So this is, again, we're not telling you, we're, you know, we're not telling you, okay, now go about and see where the problem is. We're already telling you over here that, okay, focus on the red, and if you just follow that trail altogether, you will find as to what the problem is. So let's see if I want to click on log on duration, right? So I see that, okay, majority of my users are not happy. Majority of those 50 users are having a poor user experience because of log on. When they launch an app, it takes way too long. For some reason, I'm just seeing, seeing spinning wheels over there. Why is that the case, right? Well, one of the big reasons for that over here is because, well, these three GPO policies, now keep in mind that we're looking into which GPO policies affect logon performance, right? So we're not just saying that, oh, go look at GPO and you've got to figure out as to which GPO policy. We're telling you deterministically that these three GPO policies are affecting, you know, poor logons. So now let's say you go about, you know, tweaking those GPO policies or log on scripts, and you might have a network copy to your a storage, which is hosted in your desktop environment, you fix that, and all of a sudden your user experience score, you know, trends up altogether. Okay. Now, let's say you want to click even further down, you want to do even more triaging, so you, we'll give you a list of users, we'll tell you, you know, associated user attributes, and after that you click on a given user, we will tell you, okay, how many sessions are associated, you know, associated for that particular user, and the color coding means in these, the numbers that are color coded means they're above what is considered as not optimal experience. So we're already telling you that this user has a user experience score of 10. And one of the reasons for that is because log on is high, brokering is okay, right? GPOs is way too high. So clearly that's something that you need to go look at. Okay. So this is, you know, this is just summarizing a good visualization as to how we're calculating user experience score. So we look at latency, we look at log on, we look at VDAs, we look at you know, how many reconnects that have happened. So let's say you had a network blip altogether, okay? You had a network blip. In some cases, right, we actually have the smarts that are built in that if the network blip is not too long, we're each able to recover from that particular session, okay? But if, for whatever reason, if the network blip is way too long, for you know, some reason you just don't have a good, good network altogether, which means you don't have access and your screen just froze, we will capture that because now user experience is degraded altogether, right? And that will go into your network, network latency cause as to why, you know, why you're suffering from poor user experience, okay? So let me just pause over here, you know, just hand it over to Jitendra who will actually show you as to how this looks, um, you know, in the product. Thank you, Samir. All right, so uh, Samir talked about the user experience score, right? So that's really uh, one of the things at the heart of 
you know, what we want to do here so that you can quickly figure out uh, how users are trending. You know, and, and you can see this across all sites or you can drill it down per site. As Samir mentioned, that one of the key things we have here is you can aggregate different sites in one single view so that you can get a quick overview of how your entire user population is doing. Uh, so if you see here in the last 12 hours, uh, you know, you had around 167 users across all of your sites, and 18 had uh, sort of excellent uh, user experience. And like Samir mentioned, that uh, you know, user experience is calculated from a variety of factors. You know, logon duration, the latency. So, uh, as you can see, so the, the user experience score uh, graph is aggregated across all sites, and. You know, you, we have 167 active users over the past couple of, uh, well, more than a couple of hours, actually, 12 hours, uh, who have uh, logged in, and uh, quite a few have, of them have kind of a fair user experience score, and the way we calculate that is based on their latencies and, and various other factors. Now, the important thing here is that the user experience score algorithm is something which we have come with as an initial step. But as we hear more feedback from you guys, that's going to be tweaked. Uh, the other thing is you can set thresholds on what it means for your user base to have a certain experience, right? So if you think that a score of 50 is actually pretty good, then, then you can set that uh, you know, within, uh, within the service. We are also going to add alerting around this so that you know, if you see that 70% of your uh, uh, users in a particular site have bad user experience, then you'll get an alert saying that, hey, something's up. And then you can quickly go and go to that particular site, look at the trend, verify it, and then drill down into what's actually happening. So you know, this is sort of a recurring pattern here, a recurring theme, if you will. Uh, we want to give as many drill downs as possible in this entire experience so that you can see things at a higher level as to what's happening. And then based on what trends you see, you can go deeper and deeper to figure out what really is happening so that you can quickly you know, figure out what the problem is. So just as an example, you can, uh, let's say, I click on uh, users who have a fair experience. It should be able to uh, you know, uh, go to all the users who have that experience. And then you, should, uh, you can actually write a query, like for example, Brokering is, is typically, uh, you know, it should take like one or two seconds at the most for a cloud or an on-premises site. So if you have brokering taking, let's say, five seconds or more, you can quickly figure out uh, which users have that problem. And based on that, you can then see, you know, whether if you have an on-premises site, maybe your database is a little bit overloaded, it's slow, so brokering is taking a while, or if your enumerations are slow, then you can kind of quickly drill down into what's happening there. Uh, you can uh, you know, even uh, have other things like, let's say brokering is fine, le taking less than three seconds, but maybe your GPOs are kind of not doing great. So maybe they're taking more than 45 seconds to, to load up. You can quickly figure out for what users they have that issue, and then go to that particular VDI machine. Maybe that VDI machine is, is not doing great, uh, what have you. Uh, so again, you know, don't uh, get into the actual details of what I'm showing right now, but the theme here is that we are essentially collecting a ton of data from your entire site and sending it, and you can then query things on top of it, right? So we are going to show you trends in the beginning, and then, you know, as you can see uh, negative trends, you can go down and figure out what's happening. So that's the whole idea here, you know, to be able to give you a higher level view, and then you can uh, you know, actually figure out using very powerful query languages or query language, uh, which should, uh, you know, you should be able to query on a number of factors like latencies, GPOs, logon durations. Even within the logon durations, you can figure out what the different steps are and then query on particular steps within that logon uh, view. So uh, going back to the actual main view, 
You know, we also have a number of other areas like, you know, user session launches. So you can quickly see a trend. Again, the theme is trends. So you can see uh, launches across different sites. And let's say uh, in the morning, uh, in one of your sites, uh, there is a sudden drop in launches. You know, you see like a cliff, like the, the horror cliff, you know, like you know there's an outage going on. You know, I, I actually manage the Citrix uh, Cloud CVAT service uh, for engineering. So, so that's uh, sort of a nightmare scenario. If I ever see a cliff in any of my graphs, you know, I basically uh, know it's not going to be a good day. But anyway, so, uh, you know, if you, if you find out that your trends are not in the right direction, you can then quickly see, you know, what's happening and, and debug it. Uh, one of the things we also want to add is very, very powerful reporting capabilities. So you can kind of uh, see these aggregates across the entire month, you know, create nice reports, you know, give it to your, you know, your boss and show, you know, hey, this is how Citrix did over the past uh, one month or so, and, and so on. So there are a lot of new things which are going to pop up, uh, you know, as we go along in this journey of CVAT analytics. So you want okay. to... Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. So as uh, as Jitendra mentioned, you know, so we're looking at all this information across different sites, and and this, you know. Pretty much this, this uh, dashboard widget is to assess health, okay? As, as you mentioned, you know, if, if there's a sudden dip of sessions, you need to know as to why that is the case, and you can start uh, troubleshooting. Uh, the next thing is uh, we, don't, we not only look at that, but we also look at logon as well. So just, if you're just interested in logon, we will, again, we will again, using our models, we will tell you as to what is a good logon, an okay logon, and a really bad logon experience altogether, right? So this classification is done already pre-populated, uh, you know, for you. You don't, you don't have to do anything on your side. And then you can start troubleshooting as to why are users having a poor logon experience. Third is that if uh, users are having a poor uh, experience because of network, right? Again, we're showing you a trend across all sites that will tell you as to if users are happy working with Citrix stack. And if that is not the case, network is a problem, right? Which is, you know, uh, which, is, uh, which is an indicator over here because we do the classification into you know, network latency metrics into good, bad, ugly, and obviously the ugly is the red. And if your red is decreasing over a period of time, you know that users are actually having a, uh, having a good experience with Citrix stack. Okay, um, so so far most of it was focused on users and their sessions, but we want to take that a step further, and we're also looking into providing infrastructure visibility. So, for example, whether you're a desktop OS environment or a server OS environment, we will tell you. We'll just give you an aggregate view. Again, again, huge benefit to all on-prem customers uh, aggregating across all sites as to okay, how are your VDAs doing? Are your VDAs overloaded or not? Right, IO VDA is doing uh, fine. Uh, do you have more number of VDAs over a period of time going into maintenance mode? Right? Do you have more number of VDAs going into, you know, uh, what is known as unregistered mode, which is, you know, so perhaps some sort of a patch management strategy went wrong, and you have more and more machines that are not being able, that are not available to service your users who are launching apps and desktops, and hence they are having a poor user experience. Right? So we we're providing that uh, infrastructure visibility as well. So those are some of the value that I just shared with you. Now, you know, I understand that majority of customers are on the left side of this table, right? So let me just walk you through. So if you're an on-prem customer, okay, what do you need to do? So first of all, we're not asking you to install any new connector, agent, nothing of that sort, right? All the smarts are actually built into the product. So it's very important to recognize that there are no new components to be installed outside of what you're upgrading or installing on a, um, you know, on a frequent basis. So that's number one. Obviously, the, some of the smarts that are being built in requires you to either be in our Q2 version, which is just about to come out, or the next LTSR version. So if you're an LTSR release and you want to be on the LTSR release, upgrade to the next LTSR release and you'll have a lot of this capability. Okay. 
it does not require you to be on VAD cloud service or workspace service, which is very important. So if you want to be on-prem, you can continue being on-prem. All we require you to do is have a account on our Citrix Analytics platform. And the only reason we need that is because we need to be able to look at data so that we can start running models and showing you these you know, visualization widgets. If that's not something that is not of interest to you, you can go about continuing you know, just using existing tools that you're currently using. And you know, you know, this is definitely an opt-in program rather than opt-out program, right? So because we need to know what is your account within our platform that, that recognizes you as a customer. So it's a very simple you know, onboarding journey. Now, if you're, you know, if you're a customer that's either have gone down the journey of uh, adopting uh, workspace or on our cloud service, right? So let's take the first example of, you know, you've gone from on-prem and you've moved your control plane to cloud, you know, and let's say your workloads are on-prem and or cloud, okay? In this case, the only thing that we need is an org ID. That's it. There's absolutely nothing that you as a customer needs to do in order to get this particular service. And the org ID expresses interest that you like what we've shown so far and you would like to either participate in a trial or you would actually like to take, uh, you know, take it to your production environment. Given that you know, your on-prem cloud and analytics are totally three separate components, there is absolutely no, you know, we do not affect your performance day-to-day -day operations of your apps and desktops environment because that's completely separate. So that's very important to recognize. So a lot of customers will be, like, yes, I like the value that I, what I've seen so far, but, uh, you know, but will it affect my current performance of my apps and desktop stack? The answer is no. Um, so it's a single step onboarding, which is actually more for our team. It's, it's more for us internally that we need to get onto, you know. And once you do that, you will see this, you know, you will see this tile, which is on Citrix Analytics. You click on Manage within Citrix, within Citrix Analytics, and it'll directly take you, you know, to security performance and, you know, productivity tabs. Okay. So, you know, what I want to... Uh, show over here is that, you know, how simple, you know, one of the things I mentioned as a differentiator is simple onboarding process, you know, taking, you know, less than five minutes to get onto this particular service. So what we'll do is let's, let's get onto a director environment. So let's say if you're using director, how do you actually get onto performance analytics altogether? I'll here, so maybe I will. and then take. Yeah, I think, I think you're there. All right, so uh, like Samir mentioned, if you are an on-premises customer and you update uh, to the latest CR, the, the next one, uh, or the one after that, I, I, I don't quite remember. So uh, this is what your experience is gonna be if you want to onboard uh, to the Citrix Analytics service. Right, so this is, uh, you know, behind the scenes you can see director uh, as a console, and, uh, you know, you basically will, will get this particular uh, UI, and then you essentially need to uh, register for the, for the Citrix Analytics service, right? So you have a number of steps here, and, uh, you know, you then get started. You put in your Citrix Cloud credentials, which you would, uh, you, you would need a Citrix Cloud account uh, before you can do that. So once you have that, you would need your credentials, your authenticated, you select the customer, because you could have more than one Citrix Cloud account, essentially. So you need to select which account you want to send this data towards. And that's it. You know, you basically, the onboarding process cannot be more simpler. You know, a few clicks, get an account, you log in, and we start sending the data from your on-premises site into the analytic service, and you, you can obviously get all the rich capabilities which we are adding. The one caveat here is that, obviously, if you're on the cloud service, you know, we uh, rev the cloud service every so often, right? So, so we are adding capabilities all the time. So you would uh, get newer capabilities sooner if you're on the cloud, uh, but we do support this with the on-premises product also. So uh, with the CR and, and with, the, with the cloud service. So the LTSR, 
again, you will get capabilities, but you know, between two LTSRs, there's a lot more stuff we are going to add, so you would kind of lose out on, on getting some of that. Uh, because you know, the data we send uh, to the cloud is going to be limited to what we send in the LTSR. So between the two LTSRs, there might be a lot more data we send, which we can then crunch in the cloud and, and show you good insights. So, I mean, the, the experience, again, cannot be more simple than this. It's, it's really a seamless experience to get you onboarded into the service. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, over here, the point I was making is it is an opt-in. It is an opt-in, right? So, the, you know, with the first screen that Jitendra was showing is just more like, you know, because last year within Citrix Director, we were releasing about four new features every three months. Um, and it was, you know, it was hard for a lot of our customers just to keep up with the pace of innovation that we were actually having, right? So we made it easy for them just to let them know, right, the right side is on specifically obviously on the analytic side, but the left side we are also introducing desktop probes as well, right? So this is like, okay, if you want to know more about this particular, you click yes. Once you click yes, the only thing that we need from you is an account that identifies you as a customer. And once we have that, then that's about it. There's, there's nothing else that, and well, once you, provide those account credentials, you can directly go to the CAS platform and you'll, you'll start seeing all of that data automatically. So as you can see, it's like all we need is an account. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of prerequisites, besides an account, we just need an outbound connection. It's on a secure port. It's 443. So we're not asking customers to even punch in any firewall, uh, you know, in any holes in their firewall altogether. Okay. So which is, which is obviously, which is obviously very important. Uh, you know, because if you need to, uh, you know, if you need to open an inbound port, you need to get permissions and things of like that, which will obviously delay the process. Okay. So some of the common questions is that, okay, I'm an on-prem customer, I'm on 715 LTSR, how do I go about getting this? Uh, there, are, there, are, there are three ways of doing that. Uh, one is you can either upgrade to our Q2 version of our upcoming release. So go on to the CR, uh, go on to the CR cadence. Second is you can move your control plane to cloud, you know, which is a little more, which is obviously a lot more disruptive, but I'm just giving that that is another option. You know, or if you want to stay on the LTSR track, just move to the next LTSR and you'll, you'll get all of this, right? We're also launching a preview program um, in Q2 as well. So, you know, for customers, uh, please reach out to your uh, sales reps. Um, you know, if you are interested in, uh, you know, trying this particular service out, we will have a two month trial uh, once we go GA. So that's something that uh, you can take advantage of as well. And for customers that are outside of the US, uh, we are having data repositories. Uh, we will have CAS platform support in EMEA as well as APJ. So let's say you're a customer in Europe, all of the data will only sit in Europe and never leave Europe. So, I mean, that's obviously, we're required you know, as a company to make sure that we update our GDPR guidelines to reflect that all the data that we're collecting will be in the GDPR documentation. You know, uh, I want to say predominantly every single data is monitoring data, but as and when there is any PII data, we will be reflecting that as part of our GDPR compliance talk and making sure that, uh, you know, we highlight as part of that process as to how we're securing it, managing it, and things like that. Okay. We went through the demos, so I'm not going to go through this. Um, so before you leave, um, all of these, oh, by the way, all of the content that I just shared with you, uh, you will have access to all of these slides. Um, you know, you can also revisit our session uh, through Synergy TV as well. Uh, if you liked what, uh, what we shared with you, what we presented, please uh, definitely give us feedback. Synergy over Synergy, we're looking to make sure that uh, we as uh, speakers improve to make sure that you get the most out of uh, our products, uh, you know, moving forward. And there are a lot of other uh, Citrix analytics sessions. Um, so we have a repeat session tomorrow, but outside of that, uh, these are other analytics sessions that I encourage you to attend if this is something of interest to you. Um, you know, we're also on Twitter as well. So Synergy, uh, Citrix Synergy, outside of that, there is our own uh, session ID tag as well. And that's about it. Thank you for your time and staying with us.